up YouTube, I'm Mike and today we are finally heading out of town. I want to shoot a quick video just to show the state of the truck and trailer. If for no other reason than insurance purposes should shit go horrifically wrong. So this is what we're looking like on the hitch. Hitch weight uh, currently is about seven to 800 pounds, which honestly I feel like is a little light. I may have to lower this uh, pin box or my uh, way safe hitch. I may have to lower that depending on what kind of ride we get. I was actually expecting it to be closer to a thousand pounds, but uh, watch out baby girl. This is the trailer completely full of all of our stuff. Um, we've got our pantry, all of our solar wiring is up here, batteries in the box. Our Dometic fridge is running on 12 volt right now. We got our E-Track installed. We got our quads, our mattress, the kids' beds back there, we got it all. So we may or may not take this thing to a scale, given the fact that it's not so it's not as heavy on the hitch as I was thinking. Um, I'm guessing that we're well within the cargo weight capacity, but can't know for certain. So we may we may scale it. We may put it on the scale. Um, so yeah, this is what it's looking like, uh, courtesy of Colorado Trailers and Cargo Mate, I think Cargo Craft. So, that's it. We're heading out of Dallas today. Are you ready to go, baby girl? Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. We're going to go sweat in the desert? You go to some canyons? You want to see the Grand Canyon? You want to go swimming? You want to catch some fish? All right. So, there you have it. Uh, today is uh, May 18th, about 1.45 p.m. We're heading to Am uh, Abilene to a state park. Because we want to just do a quick test so we're gonna we have about a three hour drive see how the truck and the trailer um how they all run together and make sure the ride is good and then then this first night we'll have power and water so that we don't start out trying to boondock and live off the grid on a rig that we just put together because there's undou undoubtedly gonna be some problems so our first three days on the road are going to be in state parks just trying to get out to texas that way we have a little bit of a backup you know we've got power and water so that we can try to you know, get our legs underneath us and figure all this crazy shit out and make sure everything works the way we think it's going to because every time that we've tried to do this uh, previously, there's been some kind of drama. So I'm fully expecting that. Hopefully I will not be taking a video of our trailer in a ball of flames or smashed on the side of the road. Hopefully the next video will be in Abilene State Park with everything all decked out. So we'll see you then, uh, we'll, we'll check back in on the road. Well, we made it to Abilene. Um, first time towing the trailer that we, we basically, well, we didn't build the whole trailer, but we built out inside. And it towed far better than our previous RV. So I think I'm gonna make a, a sneaky video about coming up. Um, but the trailer towed a lot better. Uh, I had to go to the bathroom. I'm walking through this little uh, wooded area. Um, the weight, everything, just everything about it is is much better set up than the $75,000 RV that we that we had and uh, really I think we we're gonna end up having more livable space even for today even for days like today where we're probably gonna stay inside the trailer for the night because we're only staying here for one day and the uh, outfitter tents that we have take a while to build it takes like 30 minutes to set one of those up you have to drive a ton of stakes into the ground it's 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 a it's a big process there we have a 12 by 12 and a 10 by 10 for the kids and then obviously if the kids want to stay in the trailer they can because it's got heating and air conditioning and lighting and all that um our intention is to camp as much in the tents as possible but there's a lot of square footage comparatively inside this trailer um i haven't checked the tv to see how it fared uh, i had an extra 55 inch older tv that i replaced with the oled at the house and so we decided to bring that in the ps5 for days where we're like it's, it's getting ready to rain to where we can't really do anything play video games inside the trailer um so i haven't checked to see if it survived the trip i, I have a like a box i bought like a moving box for a big tv and strapped it all in so i haven't i haven't checked to see if it broke but everything else rode really really good stayed stable right where we put it um Got about two miles to the gallon better. So the, the total gross vehicle weight of this setup is 17,000 pounds. The gross vehicle weight of our 36 foot travel trailer 
was 19,800 pounds. It was getting about six to seven miles to the gallon, and we got nine miles to the gallon um, in this F250 right here. Uh, the, is the It's got the 7.3 liter Godzilla gas engine in it. So uh, we did better on fuel, and the towing experience was substantially better. Uh, we're hooked up to power here. We got this little toilet I'll show you. Um, we're not using it here. It's gonna be used for when we're actually out boondocking. But this little, this little sink is a foot pump sink. So you just push on the on the foot pedal, and when it's full of water, oh, some of it came out right there. Water will come out, and it connects to that toilet. And then when you when you wash your hands, you guys all this in a later video. But when you wash your hands with soapy water, the soapy water goes into a basin in that toilet, and then you flush the toilet with your soapy water and then when you fill it up, which is like five gallons, then you just take it and dump it. Um, so that's really better for the girls. Me and my son don't mind peeing on a tree um, or whatever, digging a hole, but it, it's, it makes it a lot easier for my daughter and my wife. So uh, that's what we're using for sink and toilet. That was one of the problems that we had. Uh, the last time we tried to go tent camping, it was just con constantly dirty, you know? It's no place to wash your hands, get clean. Um, everything in here is a mess right now but I'll take you back here real quick. This is just a quick overnighter, and then we're going to the Monahan Sand Dunes for a couple days. So we got the quads out of the RV. My son's bed's out here, if we haven't put everything together. We got this Camp Chef uh, dual burner 60,000 BTU stove. Look at you, Chef Paul. What's going on, bruh? What are you cooking? Spaghetti. See? We make them work around here. It's not a free ride. Pug Yeti. Oh my God! What is in your mouth? What is that? A sandwich? All right. Um, with the quads out, you'd think there'd be a lot more space, which there will be later. Um, I got my TV over here. This is my entire. This is a full-size bed that I had in my office, and that bag contains the bed an entire queen sleeping bag, all of our sheets, pillows, everything. So that's really cool because it allows us to store, have our bed all in one piece. So if we build the tents, and we have to sleep on the floor for one. So if we build the tents, we carry that entire thing, which is really not that heavy, into the tent, unzip it, boom, your bed's ready to go. The kids' beds, right there, those stack into like um, bunk beds or you can leave them separate. And so, so we've got them set up where they're already built. Basically, we're trying to make the process of setting up camp and taking down camp as fast as possible because the last time we tried to do tent camping, it was a nightmare with the setup and the takedown. Um, so, uh, what else? This is a wardrobe. It's all wrapped up. It's got all of our clothes in it. It's got like 140 pounds of clothes in it. We got the Dometic CFX. Three, it's a 75 liter uh, refrigerator freezer. So you got freezer on one side, refrigerator on the other side. We got a pan. Oh, we got a pantry that doubles out, opens up wider. So we got all our food in one place. We don't have to worry about that. Last time we were tent camping, all of our food was in these tubs. Living out of these tubs right here is a bitch. This is all temporary because we're just trying to get we're just trying to get everything sorted out. What we're trying to get this thing set up is, and mainly the, the, the RV is supposed to be for storage anyway, but tonight we're gonna sleep in here. So all these tubs are gonna get stacked up over here in the front. Then we bring the bed down, put it in the floor. The kids' beds back here in the back. That black thing right there, it's all piled up on the side, is a divider. So you can create a room, two separate rooms inside here. Um, we got the AC blowing up there, which is probably ruining this video, so let me get out from underneath that. I didn't even think about that. This video is going to be shit anyway, because I don't have my good mic and everything. But this is just a, this is just, uh, just a test run. You know, this is our first time. We just threw everything in here, and so we could hit the road, because we've been stuck in Dallas for months. And so I said, look, let's just throw everything in here. We'll learn as we go. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing right now, and uh, hopefully everything works out. And then I'll show you a video when we actually get it all dialed in. What's up, YouTube? It's uh, day two. We actually survived the night without any problems 
unlike our first night in the other RV, which I cannot name, but somebody may mention in the comments section, um, the rig held up great. It actually rained all night long. And we didn't have any flooding inside of our RV, which is not technically an RV. I know that. It's a, it's a race trailer. But, um, yeah, you would think that when you go to a company that has a reputation for building incredibly good products and everyone online says nothing but positive things about them, that you would not spend seventy dollars to $75,000 on a brand new RV that every single time the slightest bit of rain comes, it floods the entire RV. Uh, we did not have that problem last night in a race trailer that cost about a quarter of that price. All, all of our electricity worked perfectly. Uh, we didn't use our solar setup, so instead I'm using a Victron 30 amp, char uh, 30 amp uh, 120 volt charger to plus up our batteries off of the off the 110 power, the, one, the 120 power here in the campsite. So, um, you know, having a full bed to sleep on, on solid, base, not solid ground, but on, on the solid um, bottom of the, of the race trailer rather than sticking out in this tiny little claustrophobic slide. That worked really well. We had a toilet inside of our uh, trailer that we were able to use all night long, all four of us, um, which worked fabulously. Um, we don't have any tanks to drain this morning, so we don't have to worry about getting to a, a dump station. We're not worried about our water system being filled up because it's so much more versatile than the other system. I mean, I just can't tell you. Uh, towed great, set up very easily. It didn't leak. Um, all the power and water systems that we put into place worked exactly as expected the tongue weight was exactly what we expected instead of having the company lie in their in their product literature and tell you that it's one thing when it's actually another um the air conditioning ran all night long um with no issues with the one ac inside the 24 foot trailer it was plenty enough to keep it uh, really at whatever temperature we wanted we barely had it running and, and had it at 70 degrees all night so uh, really just can't say enough, uh, about that. Obviously this is the least ideal condition you could possibly be in. You know, we drove, we didn't leave until late in the afternoon. We got here very late in the evening, you know, just before sundown had to set up a situation really quickly. That's not really designed to be set up quickly. So we didn't get our tents out. We were just forced to kind of sleep inside. We had little to no internet and the tree cover, uh, here is so much that we couldn't get our Starlink up. So we still haven't got the television out and watched TV or anything, tested all that kind of stuff out. But for our first maiden voyage in what should be what they call the shakedown period, so far so good. We've had zero problems. Now that I say this, the second half of the, of the trip will be a total disaster and everything will fall apart. But the first night went really, really well. And so we're feeling really good about what we have set up here. It's so much easier to tow, so much easier to manipulate because it's, you know, the thing is it's a 24 foot race trailer, but on the, but it's actually 29 feet long because it's got a long tongue with a generator box and all that. So it's really bigger than, than it seems. But uh, for something that again, is only a couple of thousand pounds lighter than our previous setup, Makes you feel like the components that we chose are more or higher quality. There's not all the particle board that just falls apart at every every bump. And um, so far, everything's been very durable, uh, which you wouldn't really expect to be talking about at the end of the first trip. But like I said, we had such a bad experience with such a, with a product that was just made by complete and total imbeciles who who really should um, should follow in Alyssa Heinerscheid's shoes and quit before they. They destroy their brand. Um, of course, we now know that the reason that there are no negative reviews about this particular brand is because they blackmail you and they threaten you and then they and then they pay you off handsomely. So thank you guys, because I want you to know that you guys bought us this trailer, and so far we love it. So to all of you who know who I'm talking about, I would just like to say thank you from the Van Dusen family. So there you have it. Uh, this is the, the morning of day two on this little trip. We're getting ready to head to Monaghan's Sand Dunes, where we hoped to ride the ATVs and the dunes, but they no longer allow that because Texas is um, 
the worst state, I think, maybe in the entire country for owning ATVs. You just cannot ride them anywhere. Um, so we're in a hurry to get to New Mexico where we can we can enjoy some some sand and, and dune riding before we head up to the Grand Canyon and then hopefully on into the uh, mountains of Colorado. So I'll have another update uh, as soon as I have something to share. We made it to the next spot. Sorry about this audio, it's gonna be terrible. I don't have my normal mic out. I'm just gonna shoot a quick video. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like. We are in the middle of the sand dunes. I didn't even know we had dunes like this in Texas. Um, hang on baby, I'm shooting video. We have been setting up camp, starting to build our outfitter tents because we're gonna be here for a couple nights and we wanna get that tested out. And it is a hot bitch here. It's 91 degrees in the baking sun. We finally got a little cloud cover. It's getting later in the evening, so it's supposed to be cooling off pretty soon. And then tomorrow, it's gonna be real nice in 76. The only reason we even booked this spot is because we thought we were gonna be able to ride the quads and all these dunes. And then apparently, they changed the rules on that. But there's like two people in this entire state park. So since I haven't seen a sign, I'm not positive that they did change the rules. And I'm about to test one of these bitches out, I think. So we'll see, but um, this is where we're at for a couple days. Um, I'm gonna have some more bodybuilding content coming up. Um, for anybody who's actually still so, you know, watching this, man, I gotta tell you, I feel amazing these past few days. The side effects that I was having from the trend are 100% gone. I've been in the car with a with a screeching cat, and two two loud kids for hours at a time. My, I mean, obviously, I think the the Xanax is to is playing a huge role in this, but nevertheless, man, uh, for those of y'all who were worried about me, uh, you should not be. We are feeling life in the Van Dusen family right now. So once we get everything set up, I I'll take a little bit more video when it cools off and show you guys what the camp sets, uh, setup looks like.